Okay, here we're going to look at Billy Carson. He's come on the scene a few years ago. He showed up as being the token person on the uh, ancient aliens type thing and is really taken and running the ball with it and, uh, you know, uh, showing up in a lot of their work. And he's got his own work going, which we're going to look at this here in a minute, where he's claiming the where he's going to explain the races of the Anunnaki gods. I don't know if you're aware of the Anunnaki and the stories that go in with it, but if you'll actually leave out the whole idea that Sitchin put into that, because I definitely tried to find any tablets to try to make any mentions to try to even give him the inkling of most of the stuff he came up with, and that was in the first book. Once we get to the second and third, it goes way out in left field. And just because he's talking in the same uh, cadence like the Sumerians do, doesn't mean that that's written down in tablets anywhere that you can find itself. I found fragments of, ta of a tablet that was in Germany that now they realize is one of the pieces that was knocked off of the ancient story of Gilgamesh. And to me, it just sounded like it although we're missing half the sentences and all of it because it's the right hand of the sentence, still we ended up with something along that line. Anyhow, this guy here, Billy Carson, is going to try to explain the races of Anunnaki whenever there's only one of them. And this was a Caucasian story from the ancient land of Sumer. If you leave out the Sitchin idea and all the BS people try to come up with, there is still ancient tales where they go up to something like a mothership and watch the flood happen and so on. And so it actually has inklings and ideas that could lead it along. And easily you could come up with the idea that these people are from another planet that was visiting here and getting this concept. I tell you, I have a box over here that's overflowing of UFO type BS where you can try to put something on it. And in fact, a lot of these cases have multiple connectives or they really wouldn't be in the box. And it's pretty strange and quite interesting if you're into as much, but I don't want the channel to be about, and it was aliens. But he and the ancient aliens guys, of course, are, it's, it's become a meme. So let's just listen to what he tells you about the very start of this and where this concept of a flood and everything comes from here in, in its origin, starting here. In the epic of Gilgamesh, Noah, who's actually the Zizibra in the uh, real text, but in the Bible he's renamed Noah. So apparently he knows that the flood story came from the Sumerians. Yeah, and anybody that's ever read about it gets real strange feelings whenever the first time they hear that it had a whole idea where he told them the secret of it. It was him, his family, local livestock and animals. And they ended up taking off in a giant coracle, which is kind of round, which hilariously kind of looks a little bit like the one that we use in the kids thing, but it's got a giraffe and stuff sticking up out of it, doesn't it? but that would look like more of the coracle type style that they used in it. And there was a flood. And I've made videos about this before where there was a concept that it wasn't supposed to happen to them anymore. And then they found this land of Eden where they were gardening or farming. Eden is what the name of the land of the Sumerians were. So that's where we get a lot of these concepts from in fact, the ancient people of Phoenicia and the Levant got all taken into captivity into Babylon and then let back released. And whenever they were let back released, suddenly there was this whole new story going on that got developed over time. And it wasn't something that was right off the bat, but they had the kernels of it there. I go into it somewhat deep in my channel, but I want, I don't want to go into the guy that's picking apart little things, but that's what I actually study to end up finding a few connectives where I can go, aha, show you something here. But Zia Sudra 
is this ancient story with the dove, with the ravens, with the whole nine yards, and it comes out to that. In fact, that's where the story comes about, where Inanna and the rest of them are looking apparently through a TV screen or the window with telescopes somehow because they're able to, from up there, look down upon them and see what happens to all the people. And it's a horror that they decided to end all of humanity. And in their story, it was just because Enlil thought they made too much noise and he couldn't sleep good. This is a reoccurring trope in a few different people, but in this idea here, you were just annoying the gods too much and partying too much late at night. And so he ended up knocking them out. Kind of glad the Bible's got a little bit deeper story than that, but not much. The story in the Bible is that these people that were the sons of God somehow had gotten inbred with other people, which apparently, I mean, the only way to take it is that they found other primitives, other places and inbred went to them and everything got screwed up. So he decided to flood it and kill it all off. The only problem is, is that flood never happened really, unless we're looking at the Younger Dryas event. And this is where the original flood story comes from that all of these people are connected to know about because it made a devastating flood in the Black Sea area, which all used to be fresh water and turned into salt water and raised 400 foot in a short amount of time. And don't you know, shore living people lost all of their place, but a lot of other places like Doggerland and so on. And their flood story is even in the Egyptians and the Greeks and all kinds of different people where they have this common trope and people say, well, see, because of that, they know it. They even found some wood up in the Caucasus Mountains there about Mount Ararat where they're talking about. But then people said, you know, at the time, whenever they were going up there, that actually was people going up there for the Utnapishtim story. And they even tell you that they had these bitumen covered amulets that they would try to wear and stuff as a protective amulet and so on. Yeah, so now, what are we going to get here with this Noah idea? Because, see, he's already messed up. The idea is that Noah and the story is what he's fixing to tell you in a minute. Not in the Sumerian story. It doesn't say that. It's got a whole lot more things into it. But what's he put here? He is a totally different skin color from the black family that he's with. What? Why would he be with a black family in any way? Black people seem to have a problem wanting to interject themselves into everything. Even a localized people that have their own little mythology way over here someplace. Sure, it's important. And they found out now, as Billy found out, that that's got a lot to do with what's in the Bible and stuff. So uh, I know we're not in the Bible, but I hear... Let me try to interject ourselves to before the flood, it was all a black family, but then Noah wasn't. He's a different skin color somehow. How about they're all the same skin color, but the trope is, is that he was from divinity. And so if you look at the whole story here, they did say he has bright blue eyes or whatever. He has a glowing radiant skin, which is actually in the word they use is Adam. So it's a pale and blushing skin like Adam, Adam. And so he has that, but then almost instantly he stands up to and starts making secret hand gestures and talking. This is something that Jesus pulls off too in some of the Gnostic tropes, but you don't get to hear about any of those are the story of ancient Christmas, which I did last year. And if you take these Gnostic stories here, you go, oh yeah, I recognize this story, but they didn't quite make it. So there wasn't any room at the end. They went into a cave, but the cave's got a dragon. Jesus stands up and rebukes him. And he is La Hadam again. What is he's pale and blushing, but he's glowing skin. And he's gonna tell you that it has something to do with black people, but none of this has to do with black people 
or Orientals or Amerindians or anything. And I've quite often said that in my stories here. Whenever you look at that, or you look at the Greek stories or anybody else, they're not talking about these other people other than Caucasians. You even look at Herodotus' map, and it kind of looks like the ancient Sumerian map that they found, and it really describes the fact that that's all the Caucasian lands that they're talking about. They don't even put Sub-Saharan Africa on the map. It doesn't exist, apparently. They don't know anything about it. The bottom of India and so on. So if you look at that, that's actually where Caucasians were at that time. And a lot of the people making the ruling here had the same genetics and so on. And they try to put it in the idea of the Caucasus Mountains, where Mount Ararat is, which Noah lands in, separates and makes three great civilizations. Well, one of them would be the Sumerians to India, by the way. The other would be all around the Mediterranean and North Africa, including Egypt and past, by the way. And then, of course, the other one that we can all agree on would be the North area of Europe. But Europa was a Phoenician princess. And so we go off that. But then the Noans were an extremely advanced people before they had their incredible catastrophe that's almost like the tale of Atlantis. But let's, let's look at here what he says with this different color, uh, skin color somehow from the black family that he's with. Hopefully you can read those words. I don't know where he gets that concept. Well, uh, we're going to see here in a second. His skin is glowing bright. He's got blue eyes, but he's got these African type features. He's got white glowing skin. He's got blue eyes. Yeah, so these are blue eyed Caucasians. And I should flip up a couple of pictures right now and show the ancient Sumerians and their gods and their leaders and all that stuff for all these blue eyed statues. And you can find this also in the earliest Egyptian statues with blue eyed Egyptians. Just type in blue eyed Egyptians, it'll come up a bunch of these crystal blue eyed statues that are amazing during the pyramid building dynasties at the earliest points. Actually goes way back into the Nakata and pre-dynastic time and they have other statues with blue eyes that are inset with lapis lazuli, but lapis lazuli comes from Sumeria. You know, who doesn't have a connection to any of this is the people that Billy is hooked up with. This Bantu type people, which he's trying to show you an albino here and trying to get you to believe that, well, it's a secret nobody knows that somehow black people were all on the planet first and then the flood came and there was one albino guy and somehow that made whites. But hold on a second, he's not even gonna do that. He's gonna give you a list here in a minute and he's gonna put whites last on the list. But his showings are really telling too. But understand here that this phenotype that's with this black person and prognathism and so on, that no, nobody else has that on the planet. They're not related and not in this story at all, no matter if they lose all their skin pigment. Black seems to think, blacks seem to think that it's all about skin color. In fact, they try to push that idea that it's just because of my skin. And it's like, no, not at all. It's because of a lot of other things. In fact, you can even have Buster Poindexter here try to pull off this idea of we was Anunnaki and we was first. You can see this, they always try to pull off too somehow. This gives them an idea whether you're going to say the first one showed up and made Homo erectus and therefore that's blacks if you want to try to self-expose showing this and so on. But lo and behold, where does he get this idea that Noah or any person, of course, is in Sumeria where this the tale comes from, would have somehow had African type features? Believe me, it's nowhere. Nowhere except for his mind it's, it's pretty interesting then you find out later on that some other beings arrive here and they don't look anything like african features they had what we would may consider indigenous native american uh, features i don't indigenous native american features he doesn't like the word indian well it, it's an oddity anyhow you know uh uh, Columbus was supposed to be going around the other way to find India. And if he didn't find America, then he would have kept going and eventually found India. 
course, the amount of food that he have, and if there was nothing, there was no America in the way, it had been pretty tough pressed to end up making it in there. And the idea of India, and of course, we'd have first run into the Orient, which people keep calling Asia, like Asian food and so on, but that's trying to really blur the concept of the way it was in Caucasians, yeah, as, as in Asia Minor, Anatolia, what we call Turkey today, that's Asia Minor, and all this other area is Asia, and that's Caucasians. There's Oriental people in the Far East, and that's what he would have run into. But uh, he doesn't like using the word Indians, but he just showed you Indians. Well, here's one for you. The ancient Amerindians are a mix of ancient Northeastern Europeans or Eurasians and an Eskimo type people that have a mix with some Oriental type people. And together they came over as one people in a mix, came across that Bering Ice Bridge and then turned into the Amer Indians as we know it. And I like that term because it's kind of saying American Indians versus calling them Indians whenever there's an India already well established and that mistake that was supposedly pushed out, just like they thought that somehow he would fall off the end of the earth and all kinds of other Phoenician tales of giant whales and snap dragons and all kinds of things. But uh, so he said that uh, the first ones, of course, were black, but they had a white kid that was Noah. And somehow now, then, then, then there's somebody from another planet, that's what he said, from a different planet. And these were Amerindian types. So are they mixed before they get here? Or, or what's going on here. Maybe it's just trying to shove everybody, including yourself, into a mythology that never had anything to do with you. But one thing that's really telling about this entire mythology is that Caucasians were trying to come up with the idea of why they were so much more advanced than all these other people. And in their thoughts, it must have been from the gods. And this goes back to prehistory times. We find that right off the bat when the Sumerians show up and the ancient Egyptians and so on and others at all, we end up finding this idea that they're definitely from divinity and so on and have this bloodline that goes on and everything. And everybody's got their own kind of little deal on that. And they were all sons of the gods and all this type of situation. But this again is Caucasian mythology. And if you go deep into it, it connects back to ancient Proto-Indo-Europeans from the Wayback Machine before this little flood existed, or this giant flood at the Younger Dryas event existed. And it's a way that kind of developed religion off this idea of how they could have come this way. It shows in your Bible too, that where they weren't supposed to eat of the trees because if they do, they're gonna die that day. Well, they didn't. Well, that says God lied, but then the wise talking serpent snake dragon thing didn't lie, and he said they would become as gods of this earth. This is right there in the front of your Bible showing you an idea of like, this is how we became the lords of the earth da, 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 here, you know, as compared to other people. Oh, you can try to call it racist or all kinds of white nationality freak out. Uh, if you want to, but this was the way that people were trying to figure out how this all happened. I don't want to use the word Indians, but you know, uh, they had some more arrogant features. Some had more Asian features. So some aliens came down and they looked Arabic. Well, the Arabics didn't used to look like the Arabics before the admix of the Arab Islamic slave trade that all blended back through them again. But people try to act like the people in the Middle East used to look like the people that are there now. And it's like, no, no, no. There's been a lot of blending and weird stuff going on. Just like Turkey we talked about before. It didn't used to have Turkish people in it. We call it Turkey today. But preemptive to that time, you look at who was in ancient Anatolia going back. And go back to Tepe and things like that, that they weren't involved with. They were over here. 
And what were they involved with? It's pretty neat too. But then also notice that whenever he says Asiatic, he tries to show a negrito type that has slanted eyes and extensive body scarring on him rather than actually maybe showing somebody that's actually Oriental rather than an Islander. But he's got all these people coming from all over the galaxies apparently, like we're some kind of special resort project something. And some had Caucasian features. So we see this mix. And some had Caucasian features. Then the first picture he shows is a picture that was done to show aliens that people had seen come down. And this second picture here is a picture of the Nordic Greys that keep getting told about. You know what's odd and lacking a whole lot is anybody describing a primitive black people with nappy hair riding around in spaceships came down. But there's a whole lot that go with this Nordic gray thing. And then of course, there's a lot of people that are going with that idea that's more ET looking or close encounters of the third kind really. And that's believed, believe it or not, what they think that if we get on generational starships and we were to take a ride off for generation after generation after generation, we would start turning into that type. It would take a long time, but getting on any planet with a large amount of gravity, and then you would start changing back. Or you probably wouldn't end up back where you started in something different. I made a video last year explaining this idea that if we ever figured out time travel, what we actually could be looking at with these Nordic greys and all this stuff is actually ourselves from the future makes a whole lot more sense than a lot of these concepts that come out of people. But the Anunnaki weren't a people from all different places. They were a people from one place. People go with that idea of Nibiru and so on, which is really just a northeastern city. And one of the names for that city, it really didn't have anything to do with it. It doesn't have this super cycle and the Sitchin thing that goes on. So once you take out a few of those things, just like you can take out of the Bible, the idea that there was ever a parting of the Red Sea because the oldest Bible said the Sea of Reeds and it never was a parting of the sea in the whole nine yards, whoopsie. Here starts to go all the magic out of it, doesn't it? But again, he made, oh, and there was these people and those people and you know, there were blacks were first. And then, uh, then come along Caucasian people as if in their own mythology, this would have been maybe one of the people that showed up out of their own mythology. But he's quite certain that it had something to do with black people. But then the whole thing about the fact that they, they described Noah as being extremely pale and blue eyed and all that, he's got to equate with, um, Okay, they were black, but he was an albino because I want to interject black people into this story that they were never a part of. Neither were the Amerindians or the Oriental people or anyone else except for Caucasians, just like the Bible story too. And a lot of other stories too, like the Little Mermaid and so on. All these mythologies that ended up coming out of Caucasians these weird ideas of unicorns and fanciful things and fantasy deals. And then, you know, pixies and fairies and brownies and the whole myriad of different ideas that we had, had and still do the creativeness that we come up with. Although it really seems to be lacking here lately. All they seem to want to do is make a live action version of the same thing over again and just stick a bunch of black people where they never were. If not, just take the lead like the Little Mermaid. So what else has he got to say as he's trying to interject black people into this, Billy, here? Of uh, different races. And I believe that's because they came from different star systems. That's my personal opinion. Well, so he's saying they all came from different star systems, like our own, 
perhaps out of our own galaxy and stuff. They're all zipping around. We're just a cosmic experiment. And the first one were blacks, of course, but one was an albino. That's the reason they end up saying that he is uh, definitely Caucasian. Of course, again, that's just the idea of Caucasians trying to figure out where they all come from. And they made a mythology that whenever that little local flood was, it was a flood that involved everybody and it went over the mountains, which everybody else said, what? They have their own flood stories, but there are different timings and so on, and it doesn't anything equate. But in that same idea, and they put it as a big flood in, and then ironically, in the Caucasus Mountains in Ararat, or Errata, this place that used to be, well, oh, apparently it's, it's the ancient kingdom that used to be including and coming after the Tastapelier sites of the 14, 16 sites they have so far in this ancient of empires that was going on at the Younger Dryas event where they've got all these stonehenge looking monuments around but they're all relief carved and everything and it doubled the dating that we had on civilization and concepts to where they're still fighting over if some hunter-gatherers got together and somebody had an idea one day are going to come out with the idea that, you know, around this, it could have been farmland long ago. It's so long ago we can't see it really, but we're not even going to go with this idea that they could have been doing anything with that. They were willing to reevaluate what hunter-gatherers have to do. But when he looks at a lot of ancient texts, he finds that people have this connective and of course the ancient texts are by people that have a writing. And in their common mythologies, they have this concept where there was this people up in heaven in the sky, they come from the stars. Something like if Star Trek came down to a more primitive planet, showed up and did all these things for them and even hopped them up a little bit and got them going good and then left. What might come out of that idea and that they had come from the stars? And there's only a couple of stars that are mentioned there, you know. They talk about Aldebaran, and I know that's why that's actually in the Star Wars movie. But then Taurus, which Aldebaran is the bullseye, by the way, is also connected with this, but also Orion's shoulder, which is Betelgeuse, which is about to, uh, well, they keep talking about how with well, the way it's freaking out, they've never sit and watched one go through the pulses of death here, and everyone has got to be somewhat different with each other, but in that concept, it's about to go supernova. When it does, it's going to be a incredible thing. It's going to be in the sky at nighttime. It'll maybe get people starting to look up a little more and get a little more science into things that are off this planet because we're really getting introverted here lately on all kinds of weird things. But when he looks at these ancient texts. I look at a lot of ancient texts, I start to see that beings were coming here, but not just from one place, but they were arriving on this planet from multiple uh, places. So he's got this idea that that's how humans were here, that well, whenever the Sumerian story, even in the Sitchin idea, they take something from the afar and then they turned it into it, which is an idea that comes out of Gilgamesh taking Enkidu, somebody that's a wild man, and then befriends him, which really only takes, uh, well, believe it or not, it's changed now because they found the other part of the tablet I was telling you about. And in the story, he does one bout of sex with Shamhat, the sacred prostitute. But then after that, he still wants to fight Gilgamesh and so on. And so there's that little piece in there where he gets into the fight with him all day and all night, which is in your Bible as the Jacob story of wrestling with God all day and all night. Till once Gilgamesh is about worn out, he cheats him by grabbing at his groin, but then wins. But then they become friends, but then there's a piece that's missing in there. Well, he goes back out uh, and has sex with her for another week. And then is whenever all of a sudden the animals won't come up to him again anymore. And she says, you become a citizen, civilized or whatever, and you have to get a job and doing things like that. And you're gonna become part of a machine that makes the bigger thing work and all this concept that 
we never really had in the story that was there. You can even see right below my pointer here that there's a sickle that's dangling out below his arm. And so this is Ninurta, an ancient god, and his uh, right out, well, his hand's just out of reach there, but he has a thing that has three prongs on either side, kind of like a trident, but out both sides. And you can find that same depiction in India and in the Himalayas, through Thailand. You can find it on the Sumerians that are here, ancient depictions of Zeus, even Yahweh himself, because he throws lightning. And it's this concept of this lightning storm god that ends up blurring through. What truthfully happens, and I guess this is far too long to go into here, but uh, through a second whipping coming through of these ancient Proto-Indo-Europeans and their beliefs and, and the understanding of that going along with what's written in the stars, they end up writing and taking it down to where there's a pantheon, but then there's one super guy that's out of that bunch, like Yahweh, originally started out being, and they all ended up being the storm gods, didn't they? Well, except for in Egypt, but that's understandable. They were long past having storms, if not rain, very infrequently by the time this was kicking in. But all these other people did with Zeus and so on. And uh, Zeus is Jupiter, and that comes from Protein-European Dios Pater, the Sky Father. And so it makes this big circle back to this sun god, sky father, people that were from the sky and so on. And it really does it to everybody that's involved with this, not to people that weren't. Billy's gotten a lot of accolades here lately from showing a lot of things. And of course he takes it a little too far and goes, and, and Inaki aliens. And here he's trying to pull off this idea that if, even if the Anunnaki were the aliens of the Caucasians, and that's what made them so advanced, that did everything, instead of doing such, he interjects himself, then says that Noah was an albino somehow. And believe me, I've heard blacks try to say this to interject themselves in the Bible somehow. But then again, it isn't a black people, one of them an albino, which is a rare genetic defect that goes on or comes out of any of these people and genetics have stepped up the plate and went, no. And you didn't even know that existed, much less Egypt or anything else that you try to interject yourself into. With this latest Cleopatra debacle, it's kind of shown it to people where they have this cognition problem and they want to interject themselves into everything. And I've shown, well, no, it's not really that. That's the Greeks, the Etruscans. They want to claim they were the ancient North Africans, the Moors all kinds of different people. And really what they're trying to do is not claim themselves in any way. And Billy is a part of that, but he's been severely admixed. It kicked in pretty good. And so the guy's kind of Urkel and here we go. And so they picked him up as a token on the Ancient Aliens channel. And he's trying to see if he can get more followers if he tries to say, no, it was an albino black person somehow or anything. Whatever he knows, the description on him is a extremely white thing. What is this? Well, you know, Noah and his family are where all the Caucasians come from, the three different ones that ended up founding the first cities and civilizations. Yeah. Well, they're tried to say, well, uh, this is how it happened that this had gotten all screwed up, but Noah who was perfect in his generations, along with his wife, ended up spawning out these people. Well, they would have the common genetics of each other and it's blue-eyed. Look up blue-eyed Egyptians, look up blue-eyed Sumerian gods. And of course, I think we can forego looking up all the people up north, which is where they are now. But in the Younger Dries event, when there was still a continental shelf up there of ice, they were all back over here in the Middle East. And I've got another video coming up that's gonna show you that, yeah, the Irish people have a Middle Eastern and Scythian connection along with this, and North Africa too with the Scots and so on. And hold on here a minute. Yeah, it's the same, exact same genetics. 
any you know, let, let me know what you think here about this. But yeah, Billy Carson token here has uh, tried to say, explain the races of Anunnaki, which if you look into it, there's only one race of Anunnaki and they, in our own image, blah, 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 Caucasians. Yeah, on and all these other guys that are in this super council that goes on, they were all Caucasians too. They weren't super friends from different planets and they didn't feel like culturally appropriating or pandering at this time, especially to a people they didn't even know existed. And we're trying to realize how did we become so advanced? And it sure didn't involve people that weren't. Peace.